can start. I am a Senator Morgan Comit, the National Chairperson of the MDC that was left by our late President Morgan Changrai. Yes, of course, there have been some political developments that have happened in our party for some time now. Uh, the question is, there's been a challenge on, on the concept of the party constitution. MDC is predicated on very key fundamental reforms. So, so very key fundamental core values. And these core values have been violated one way or the other. MDC believes in the rule of law, democracy, freedom, solidarity, justice among some of them. But however, these values have really caused a problem in the party. They've been violated, and there's been a group of people within the party who have questioned that. Was it, these values actually are the ones why MDC was created. And MDC has been trying all along for the last almost 18 years, when Morgan Shangri was still alive, to, to make sure that ZANU-PF government would respect these core values. We've been fighting, people have been dying, people have been arrested, people have been tortured for these core values. You know very well Mungu Chandrai was a great democrat who throughout his whole life was fighting for these fundamental core values which this party was created for. Unfortunately, things went wrong by the time Mungu Chandrai died. A group of people in MDC decided to succeed President Shangrai through unconstitutional means. Through unconstitutional means, and that is what really caused this particular problem that we have today. Some other people within the party went to the court and won the court. Really. Won the court, a court judge, a justice ensured. Judged in favor of Alias Masharil, a man from Gopo, who challenged the party. And recently, the Supreme Court bench as well confirmed that the High Court judgment was correct. And this is where we are now. And uh, this is where people are failing to understand each other. And people are uh, accusing each other. The, the, the social media are washed by accusations and counter accusations. But however, the question is not about who is wrong, who is right. We must follow the party constitution. We must follow what we're supposed to do to make sure that we, com we implement and complete the succession of Mungu Shangrai. Okay, Mr. Chairperson, uh, um, a few days ago you said, after the Supreme Court ruling, you said you're going to be engaging Mr. Chamisa. Have you, have you took any step uh, on that? We want to do through a process which is not respectful to this spirit. We are assembling a team of elder, elder people, eminent people, who are going to uh, meet uh, Mr. 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 Chamisa to look into this. Our advice is very clear. Uh, Mr. Chamisa is a lawyer, he is a pastor, and he should be able to understand his basic uh, needs, such as to, expect, to respect the rule of law and the uh, issues of democracy, he has been a, a child of MDC. He grew up in MDC. He knows what we believe in. And we really ask him to respect the rule of law. The court judgment should be respected. And we want to make sure that the elders are going to talk to him for him to appreciate that. Okay. Um, you know, after what happened, if you, after the court ruling, a, a lot of things have been said that uh, you're a sellout, you've done this, why at this time? Uh, what's your comment on that? We are going through a very serious time. A very big decision was made. I took a very big decision, which many people didn't expect. I think people really thought that we could continue abusing the people and continue violating the party constitution, continue disrespecting our core principles and core values. 
So when I stood up against that, uh, it shocked so many people. Don't forget that uh, throughout the two-year period in which we have, we have gone after the death of Shanghai, there are many people who benefited out of the legal process. So this, these same very people who have benefited out of the legal process uh, take the court judgment as a threat to their existence and to their benefits that they got. So what they are simply doing at the moment is they are defending what they got through the legal process. Uh, so that they can, they are, they are, that, 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 that's why you can find so many people are shouting at me, uh, accu accusing me of uh, selling out. But if you really look into it too closely, it's an iteration. I, I did not sell out and I will not sell out. I've been steadfast with MDC since its creation, its inception. Uh, I am one of the people who have stood with the party values and party principles for a very long time. We have had a lot of uh, conflicts in the party and I've stood with it. And uh, you know, I remember in 2005, Rosemary Mune went away. I defended the party. In 2014, Tendai Bitu went away. I defended the party. And uh, I've always been defending the party. And uh, I've been stuck to the party principles and, and, uh, and values. So what is now come now is as that I've, I've had seen that the party values and principles have been violated. And that's why I've stood up against that kind of practice. So I am correcting things. I am trying to put things in order. I am trying to bring normals in the party. I want to bring uh, to make sure that democracy is not violated, constitutionalism is not violated, justice is not violated, the rule of law is respected. That is why I am here. I want to make sure that the party is not going to be known for violence. I I want the party to to be to be restored, to go back to its original state, uh, where it was left by Morgan Shanghai. There are so many people, by the way, who are not able to that on social media, who are celebrating for this thing that they have taken. People that are celebrating that have done a good thing, people that were all up, that, that were affected for the last two years. Don't forget that the very day in which died, there was a complete structure in the country. That complete structure is, is ready and is prepared to go for an extraordinary congress. There is a there, there are full there, are, there is a full complement of the provinces, the executive, the national standing committee, there is, there is a full complement of the district and the wards. And these people are following me day and night, celebrating that at least they've been liberated. And I'm actually a hero to many people. I'm a hero. Yes, of course. I'm a heroine. Yes, I'm a villain to, 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 to some of the people. I don't mind. I am determined to take the correct route. I am determined to make sure that rationalism is respected. I am determined to make sure that rule of law is determined. And I am determined to take this party to the extraordinary Congress to elect the replacement of Morgan Shanghai. The people must be geared. The people must be ready. Just after COVID, uh, Pandemic, the people of Zimbabwe must be ready to go to the external Congress to elect the replacement of Morgan Shanghai so that we can bring the party to normalcy, bring the party back to order, bring the party to, to actually build the party which has been slowly uh, dying and decaying. Okay, Mr. Komich, you talked about unconstitutionalism in the party. What was really going on? Because you've been part of the party, I think, for the past year, one year or so, or two years, let's, go, so let's say two years. What, what were some of the things which were being done in the part which were unconstitutional? The succession uh, from, of Mugin Shanghai was not done properly. Uh, the constitution is very clear of MDC, section 9211. Uh, talks clearly about how we should do, what should you do when a president demises. The acting president is to take over. Within a period of 12 months, he must go for an external Congress to, act, to elect the, 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 the president of the president. That was not done. When we were faced with this, with this uh, unfortunate situation, some of us, we thought we were going to, to really go for an external Congress. And we were advised, let's go for the external Congress. Uh, at that particular moment, the MDC had three vice presidents. And there was an argument on, on, on who should be able, who should actually take over from the three vice presidents, which is Madame Kupe, Honorable Shemisa, Honorable Mizuri, and uh, they, were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were about three. And who was going to take over? Among those three, Shemisa was the best foot forward. 
and people opted for him to act because the, the, the previous court challenge about their appointments had been, had been thrown away in the court. So when people looked at the three, he was, he was the most suitable one. But we never agreed to carry the constitution. He was supposed to act and then call for an external congress, external congress, which was not done. And this is what the key, the whole problem is. So when Alas Mashay took us to court, he was just fine. And the court judgment came out. And I actually personally advised. I, I called for a meeting, which was attended by Honorable Wende, Honorable Mrs. Zai, Honorable Bushbai, Honorable uh, Chief Shizia, attended this meeting. And I advise that with this 2019 ICO judgment, which has been announced, we must respect it. We must comply with it. A meeting was then caused between this group of people that I mentioned with the, Ms. Chamisa, with the inclusion of uh, Advocate Tawanuko. A discussion was held. And we advised that let's go for an external congress, let's actually postpone the May Congress and, and implement what the High Court judgment is saying. In the debate, our advice was not taken. And we folded our hands. And I should advise that if you appeal as you are against, we'll lose the appeal. We'll lose the appeal. I told them that. We'll lose the appeal because the judgment is very clear that we're wrong. We didn't fulfill or implement our own constitution in the part. I was very clear about that. So really, it mustn't surprise people now when I stand up and say, enough is enough. Let's go to the constitutionalism, rule of law, democracy, freedom and justice. It's, pre it's prescribed by our own constitution, the MDC constitution. People mustn't be surprised. I've been like that. I have stood on principle for so many times. I have been taken to prison by the Mugabe government. I have been arrested by the Nagabu government because of standing on principle and values. So this is not a new thing. I have shown high level of courage. I can manage my fear. And today I know, I knew this backlash would take place, would happen, but I do not really get guarantee by that. I want to ensure the people of Zimbabwe that order will prevail, sign to prevail in Zimbabwe, MDC is going back to its original roots, MDC will be a normal part again, MDC will have part cadres that are going to be happy, and the MDC as a part is going to grow, MDC is going to contest the 2020 election and to win the election. Okay, we are still on the issue of constitutionalism. By that meeting you, uh, you said you, you invited all those stakeholders to come in. Um, who were the people who were on your side in that meeting saying, let's go this direction, and who, were, who was denying? Uh, you, you cannot believe that the uh, Honorable Chibai, Honorable Ebu Chizia, Honorable Mr. Shishai, Honorable Wende, and myself, we all agreed that we should, we should comply with the High Court judgment. When we then, after agreeing among ourselves, we then had an appointment with the Honorable Chamisa. Chamber office, chamber offices. And we talked, we, we, we briefed him on what we had agreed. He, instead of him responding directly, he invited the uh, Honorable, uh, sorry, uh, Advocate Tawanampo. Advocate Tawanampo came with an argument that he had identified 11 key loopholes in the judgment and he was prepared to go and challenge the, the, the judgment in the Supreme Court. And, uh, after that, not argue any further with the legal minds because you know uh, Advocate Chamisa and Advocate Kofi are lawyers, they, they would always prevail. But in our but in my mind, I, I actually I, I was clear that we're not going to win because that's what I advised. And actually the nation, if we continue with the May Congress, it will be nullified. Because I had read the High Court judgment and I had checked with our constitution, the High Court judgment was correct and is correct. Our constitution 
the MS constitution was violated. There are two major sections of, 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 of our constitution that were violated. Section 44, which talks about how a person gets into the standing committee. The President uh, uh, Jagirai did not follow that uh, constitution properly, that, that section properly, because when he appointed Honorable Mazuri and Honorable Shamisa, he, he did not take them through the election. But section 6441 says if you, if you are to occupy a person in the standing committee, you must go through the election. That was a direct violation. The second violation was on, this, on section 9211, which talks about the demise of the president, uh, which, is, uh, which is, demands and requires people to go for an extraordinary conference within 12 months to elect a replacement. That was not done. So really, that is where the argument is. So Elias Mashiro was correct. All those people that were talking about un I mean, unconstitutionalism, they were correct. The group of the people that, that we were talking about, okay, that was very difficult because we were wrong, was wrong. I, for sure, I want to apologize to the people of Mbaku, and I want to apologize to the nation of Mbaku. I want to apologize to the MDC members for the wrongs that I, I, I played. Now the Supreme Court judgment is out. A normal person should be able to respect that. A normal person who respects the rule of law, constitutionalism, and democracy should actually realize that we were wrong and we must, we must correct. We want to go back to the extraordinary Congress to sanitize the mess that we created throughout the two-year period so that we can get respect out of our own institutions in Zimbabwe, out of our churches, in civil society, the international community, even our own members. They will be proud to know that we are a party that follows this constitution. They will be proud to know that we are the, the, the party that respects the rule of law. They, they, they'll be proud to know that we are the people that respect democracy. So this is what I'm trying to make sure that we try to knock sense into the people. So I'm not surprised by the people that are reacting. Uh, I want to assure the people of Zimbabwe and MDC. I'm not a threat to their existence. I'm not a threat to, to, to their positions. I'm not a threat to their political career. I'm determined to make sure that all MDC members are going to be united. To be united for us. I know there are so many groups of people that are that are, that are disgruntled with the MDC. I cannot count about nine groups of people that are disgruntled. Nine groups of people that don't see, that don't, that don't work together. And I am determined to unite these people across, across the whole country. I want all people in Ngokwe, people in Chenambuya, people in Gwanda, people in Chirezi, people in Bulawa, in Harare, to be one, to be united, to Good. work for the people. Okay, still on that issue, can you tell us the, the difference between MDCT and uh, the part which is said you know, by other MDC members that we have MDC alliance? What's the difference between the two parties? The, what people are, these people are just hiding behind the fear. There is no party called the MDC alliance. MDC alliance is an, an, an electoral pact and a governance pact that was initiated by the late Mr. Jagirai. He called in these, his friends, Babangule, Honorable Biti, and many others, seven of them, to create an, an electoral pact. In, in the MDC Alliance Agreement, there are two sections, major sections. One section that chooses with the electoral pact, how they are going to confront the Zambia during the elections. The second uh, section deals with the governance pact, how they are going to distribute positions in the government if they don't want election. There is no section that deals with what will happen thereafter as political parties. It is clear in the agreement that each party is going to, to maintain its identity, which means PDP will not die, MDC Green will not die, MDC Team will not die, Jacob Garden's party will not die, Zandunga will not, will not die, MCD will not die. That, was, that, is, that, is, that is very clear. And in that agreement, it's very clear who the head of the alliance was. It was, it is, it was stated that Morgan Shangrai, in, in, in name, is going to be the head of Shangrai. In, in, in the agreement, again, it stated that uh, whoever replaces Morgan Shangrai will be the head of MDC Alliance. And we've not yet identified that person. That is what we need to go to the Eastern Congress to identify the replacement of Morgan Shangrai if he or she is found by the Eastern Congress he or she will become automatically the head of the MDC Alliance. 
which is just an electoral pact agreement of election, not a political pact. So no one particular part or two parties within the agreement can claim ownership of that alliance without the consensus, the, 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 without the consent of other seven or other six or, or seven political parties. Which therefore means MDCT, having been the key component of the MDC alliance, can challenge legally the people that are claiming that they now have a party called MDC alliance. There's nothing called MDC alliance. And it's clear in the MDC in the alliance agreement that how the MPs were distributed in the parliament. A PDP contributed its number of members of parliament that are there. ADC Green also contributed its number of MPs that are there and the MDCT. It is clearly said no one party can discipline the members of parliament of the other part, which therefore means people that were seconded by MDCT would be disciplined by MDCT. People that were seconded by PDP will be disciplined by PDP. People that were seconded by MDC Green will be, will be disciplined by MDC Green. So really, the people that are claiming that they formed an, an, an alliance party, they, they are legally wrong and they will be challenged. And they are lying to the people. The MDC, the MDC alliance is not a political party. The parties, it's stated, it's not clearly stated in the agreement that they will maintain their identity. So really, it is not true. So the party which is known, which is, which is in Zimbabwe, which is a, a leading constitution, is MDCT, is MDC, which was a, a trading elections, is MDCT. The one that was formed, led, and left by President Mugabe Chandra is the one that is going to dispute everything, is the one that needs to go and correct the problem that we have created and we lived with for the two years. So the, the question is not about Ishuyana Tendai Beach or Ishuyana Ghana Watchman. No, they are not part of this wrangle. This wrangle is an MDCT problem, which, which is supposed to, to go to the State of Congress to elect the replacement of, of Morgan Shangri. Then after that, when, when the MDCT family is intact and is, uh, it has uh, identified this leader, uh, people can look at it. The possibilities of furthering the interests of the alliance. As I said in my first statement, that we are prepared to call in a meeting of Tendai Bt, People First, to see and look for possibilities of, of maintaining and sustaining the alliance because of elections, not for diffusing uh, our party in this city. No, no, that will not happen. If it's going to happen, it will be a new idea for the future. Okay, some people are saying that you are bitter from the 2019 Congress, uh, which you lost when you wanted to be the vice president. Can you, what can you say about that? I'm one person who believes in democracy. I've been in MDC for a very long time, and I'm, I'm not worried about the position. Throughout my 20 year experience in MDC, many people were appointed into position. Many people are appointed into the cabinet. Many people are appointed in various positions, and I've never complained. Many people are appointed as vice presidents. I never complained. It has never really affected me, because I don't stand for positions myself. I stand for values and principles. And when I look at MDC, I look at the struggle, the sufferings of the people. I look at how should we liberate this country from the bondage of Zanapia. Those are my issues. And I don't look, I don't, when I look at them, I don't see a person. That's why I got the courage and, and, the, and, and the determination to stand up again now and say, uh, you guys, you, you have gone wrong. Let us go this way because I don't look at the position. So the question of bitterness is not really an issue. Even though, even people talk, I participated in the process because I believe in democracy. And the, and the people in the world made their own choice. And I did not really cry. I think you know my acceptance speech is there on the YouTube. It was, uh, it, I accepted the outcome and I did not really cry. The question is, the respect of the constitution cannot be uh, sacrificed. The respect of democracy, gender equality, human rights cannot be sacrificed for the purpose of, of the position. We cannot then take that as an excuse to try to tarnish me that I, I, I got a better self. 
after the Congress, as I was appointed to a very important position, by the way. Secretary for, for, the, for the Brazilian Affairs is a very powerful position in the party. Uh, some people nicknamed me as the deputy president. Some people nicknamed me as the assistant president. And the job that I was, I was doing, I was actually doing the job for the president. I was a manager for the, for the, for the, for the, for the president's job. The, 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 the president was a leader, and I was doing his job. And I know some other fellows were really jealous about it. There were some talks in, internally that I have, I have become a de facto deputy president. So the job was very important, was very key, but that is not what should really drive me to go off track. I must remain focused, remain democratic, remain constitutionalistic, remain, uh, I want to, to emulate the, our late president was a great Democrat. And I want to be a great, I, want, I also want to be a great Democrat as well. But say, if you're one person who respect constitutionalism, oh, why did you participate in the, in the, in the Gweru elections? There are two parables that you should always know. The one of, but I'll, I'll talk about one, one parable. When you are driving a, a ship, where a sailor, a captain, if the storm comes up along the way you're going, what will you do? I know a normal person will not really go against that storm. What did you do? You will sail along with the currents. When the currents have settled, you can then channel the route the, the ship to, to, the, to the right route. It's a question of how you respond to conflicts, how you respond to problems. Some people will head, do head on, and the ship will come back, it will sink, it will kill many people and many properties. But as long as you are within the, the ship, and you negotiate with others, and you, you share your, your views, as I've told you, that I shared my view. I shared my view. I said, let's respect the high court judgment. And some of the guys that I've mentioned here by name, they actually agreed with me. And we shared that with the president. And he invited a lawyer to come in. So that is really my position. So really, it's not a question I do not agree with that position. Because I mentioned it. But if you, if you voted to be the vice president uh, of MTC, uh, would you or would you accept the Supreme Court ruling? Definitely, definitely. One thing that I've been worried about lately is that I've observed the party dying gradually. I've got sent, I've got empirical evidence of how the party has died. As I sit here, I know what has been happening in the party. I can assure you, if if we are to maintain this status quo, by the time we reach 2023, there will be no MDC. And there's, a, there's been a lot of conflicts within the party. And it has been paining me. And I've been trying to advise people, let's change the way we are doing things. So it's not only about the Supreme Court judgment. It's about the existence and the threat of MDC as a party. If you, if you want to really to take uh, some basic statistics, look at how we've been performing in by election. Since our inception and in our creation as MDC, we have never performed so badly in the by-elections. We have been beaten in by by some of years, but we were at least contesting. We at least we were, were really performing somehow. But if you look at, the, at, 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 at this recent by-election in, in, in Chimanimani, where we got, uh, I mean, 20,000, sorry, 20 votes vis-a-vis 1.5, I mean, 1.5, 200 votes vis-a-vis 1.5, sorry. 200 votes, 1.5 votes. It's, it's, it is pathetic. And uh, remember in, in Uganda, in Philabus, we came number four. MDC that we know would never do that. Probably it would be the best of being number two. But the party has been gradually dying. And people have not been observing this. Being, myself being in the, in the system, I've been nothing. And that has been really causing pain in me. And this part I'm saying, let's correct that. Let's rebuild the party. Let us bring happiness in the party.
and you're, you're still keeping uh, keeping it up, bringing up uh, the issue of uh, Advocate Taban. When Advocate Taban came in, uh, what did he promise uh, uh, Mr. Chamisa that he's going to do so that uh, he, he keeps himself in power? Actually, Advocate Taban produced about 11 points which he thought he'd identify as loopholes in the, in the agreement. And uh, that enticed the uh, oil Chamisa. But did you agree to that, to those 11 No, no, he never mentioned anything to us. He simply mentioned that he had 11 points. And you believed them? He never mentioned it. We, 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 even up now, I don't know what they, what they were. He was so confident. He was very buoyant. And he, he made uh, oil Chamisa believe, believe him. But you as a, as a senior I politician... Did not, I did not believe him. Was I had read the the, the, the high court judgment and I was convinced by the uh, by the high court judgment that we're not going to win an appeal and that is what I appeal and, and that's what I advised. I said the appeal will not be won. I even said the main Congress will be nullified. I said those words. I'm not lying. If people were honest, they would come up and, and witness for me. But you, as, as the senior person in the in the party. Uh, why did you convince them so that uh, they would follow your way? I failed to convince them. But I, but, but I told you that I convinced the other four. The other four I convinced them, as I've mentioned. I did not manage to convince the Honorable Chamisa and Taban. But the other four I convinced them. It was not an election. It was to vote. It but was there was also Honorable BT, Honorable Nui. No, the, the, the question of the court challenge was what uh, about? It was only before the so the Honorable BT, Honorable, Honorable Nui, probably advised from their own comments. I don't know what they said. So oh, we are back to the MDCT. How are you going to handle uh, uh, Mr. BT and uh, Mr. Nui's issue? These are MDC Alliance partners, in which MDCT is the key component of the MDC Alliance. So, we are not against the MDC Alliance as an, an election pact, electoral pact. We are not against that. We would actually, we actually have a, a, a big tent principle. principle. So, actually, believe in a big tent, which is the legacy of the late movement. Alliance. So, we will not let the alliance as an election pact die. We will not die. We are going to make sure that uh, soon after we have resolved our MDCT problems. We are going to engage with the Honorable BT and engage with, with the Honorable Nui and engage with many other political parties. And we would actually want to go beyond seven political parties. We want the alliance to grow to 10, 20 political parties because we must construct Zambia as, as a unity. And that's what we, what we believe in. We would win if we are united. So really we don't have any bad blood uh, with, the, with the Honorable BT and the Honorable, blood with the Honorable Nui. We actually want them in the MDC alliance for purposes of election. But uh, people, they are saying that uh, Dr. Kupi, she doesn't have the appeal to represent masses. She doesn't have uh, that thing that can drive MTC. Thank you so much. Uh, Madam Kupi is not the president of MTC. She is only holding a position of acting on acting capacity to implement the party constitution as well as the Supreme Court judgment. Because we believe in the rule of law. Whether we like Kupe or not, but the Supreme Court judgment, they said give her that those particular three months, and within those three months hold an external Congress to elect a new leader. So if the people of MDC are not happy with Madam Kupe, she is not permanently the MDC president. She is temporarily uh, an acting president for only three months. Remember that court judgment was very clear that if she does not manage to, to, to hold an external congress within the three months, the national chairperson of the party, who is me, we, in, the, in the fourth month would call for a, an external congress. And I want to assure the nation, I want to assure Zimbabwe, and I want to assure MDC, I will not fail to implement my job. My job is very clear. Currently, I'm the national chairman of the party. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm, I'm very central to the processes of, of the party. The, the, although the Madam Kupe is going to be taking a leading role, but the actual 
donkey work will be done by the National Chairperson, Supervised Governance Secretary, and the Secretary General of the Party, who is Douglas Mandora, and, uh, and uh, the Labi people there, there. So that will not fail. So that will not fail. So people that are worried about Kupe Lili, they, are, they, should be, should they, they should be patient, should have the patience. Just like a woman who would be patient for nine months, uh, having problems with, you know, with, with getting the pregnant. But uh, being patient for nine months, uh, she would be happy when the child is out. So be patient for three months. Zimbabweans, MDC people, will be happy after three, oh, three months. It's not a long period. Don't forget within the three months, there is COVID, you are already on holiday. 21 days, it's, it's, it's almost a month. So really, uh, be patient. Let us respect the rule of law. Let us respect our, our constitution. Let us really, even, even though I know many people have been really attacking Madam Kupe, people at the end of the day must always be concerned and forgive each other. Don't, you should not have too many enemies. And, we should, and you don't gain anything out of hatred. And you don't gain anything out of, out of disunity. If you go back to MDC Alliance itself, remember that uh, Honorable BT and, uh, and President Mungi Changirai uh, split one time, and, and uh, President Changirai was so bitter about what Chetilai uh, did to him. He was so bitter as well with what Bosnia uh, Mungi did to him in 2005 when he split. But uh, a great leader would always reconcile, the great leader would look at the bigger picture, and he managed to call in BT and call in Mungi and uh, call for the unity for peoples and form an alliance. So great leaders should be able to engage with their enemies and cause unity and that we can look at the bigger picture. So I'm calling for the Zimbabweans at the moment not to, to focus on hatred, to focus on negatives, to focus on the past. Let us look at the future. Let us call for unity. Let us call for love. Let us call for reconciliation. Let us call for togetherness so that we can, as one, as one family, MDC family, the Zimbabwe flag, will be able to vote an election being united. So really, I don't want to, to encourage people to focus on the, on the, on the negatives. If, if they don't want Madam Kupe to be the president of the MDC, they will have the opportunity within three months' time to elect the president of their own choice. Do you have any relationship with ZANU-PF? MDC and ZANU-PF, is there any relationship? The ZANU-PF is, is a ruling party. MDC is an opposition. We should push our opposition in the party. That's our relationship. We we confront, we meet each other on the in the elections. We meet each other in parliament. We meet each other in, in local government in councils. We meet each other on those fundamental functions that we should always perform. So there's no any unique relationship to say like a, like a love relationship. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. We we look at them as a ruling party. We are also looking for opposition party, and we are all Zimbabwe at the end of the day. The people they are saying that the, this uh, the MTCT, which has come up recently from the Supreme Court, uh, is being pushed by Zanu PF. Is it true? Uh, don't forget that Madam Kupe went to Poland before she was uh, seconded to to MDCT, East MDCT at the Supreme Court. She was given the mandate by that other party that she had created. She has not been given mandate. By the, by the MDCT that we are talking about, yes. So she's going to go to Poland if the MDCT gives her the new mandate. If the MDCT does not agree with Poland, she will not go there. So really, the relationship that people are talking about has been created because of the, of the year, year link with the Poland. But that was before the Supreme Court judgment. That was before she was then uh, seconded to lead for only three months by the, by the Supreme Court. She will not go to the, to, to the Poland. She will not go because uh, the National Council of MDCT should sit down and uh, review that. Who are some of the members who are, who are, you are coming from? Who are some of the members who are joining you uh, from the other MDCT from Madame Coupe and the original MDC which was formerly led by uh, Mr. Changirai? I will not want to lie to you. Probably it would be uh, not proper for me to mention names. But I am buoyant, I am so happy that uh, many people that I thought would not uh, support my position have phoned and uh, confirmed that we must respect the rule of law and constitutionalism. They have done that. And uh, 
main leaders at the moment they seem to be quiet but there's been a program to intimidate them they've been followed by certain people within the NPC, NPC alliance group who are who are threatening them and who are peddling lies that they will be removed from parliament which is true so they won't be able to do that and some of the people are being threatened by violence but i can assure you i've got i've got endorsement from all 2014 structures all of them they are ready to go and i can assure you you will see this when when the covid 19 period is over the lockdown is over how people are determined to, to go back to the external congress and elect them their, their, their new leader there is a lot of i cannot i don't want to divulge senior people that have already formed me senior people that that have confirmed that they want to work to me i have received a lot of confirmation and endorsement from a, lot, a number of parliamentarians number of councillors who are determined to make sure that the the, the external congress is is done Okay, recently uh, we saw a video which was circulating on social media which, which you said that you pledged loyalty to uh, President Chamisa or to, to Mr. Chamisa, let me, so, let me say President, Mr. Chamisa under any circumstance But not not when the question is valid I was trying my best with him massaging the situation to make sure that one day the question would be respected that is what I was doing. So you're saying I that never, Mr. Chamisa... I never endorsed the, the idea of going against the question of the party. I never endorsed that. I have always advised in a respectful manner. I have always advised uh, respectfully that let us follow the constitution. As I say, when we decided to support Mr. Chamisa, we were the best foot forward. But it was not based on violating the constitution. No. We were supposed to follow the constitution of the party and make sure that the, we're going to win the elections. Remember, we only President Mugen Chandra died five months before the elections. It was a delicate time. I was the chairman of the party. I had to look at key issues. I had to make to make a fast decision, and I was responsible for the elections at that time. And I had to make fast decisions. Otherwise, if I had really uh, sort of been in a serious, we would have been in a, in a serious mess. We could have really failed to work with elections, and I had to manage the, the whole thing. And, uh, and uh, I took decisions to make sure that we could go for the elections. That was really key. But we never, and I never endorsed the violation of the Constitution. I was really interested in seeing people going for the external on the Congress. And I played the night. I advised that I can assure you. So you're saying that Mr. Chamisa is violating uh, the MD Constitution? That is very clear. The, the, the Supreme Court has said that. So why is he violating the Constitution? I, that is, I think, is easy for him to answer. But I really expected that him as a lawyer and uh, as a pastor, he should be. Able to Some of them are actually the founders of this revolution, this, this movement. And I'm surprised at this particular day when I hear people trying to castigate the Supreme Court, castigate the High Court, throw away the MDC Constitution, simply because they are holding on to something that they benefited through the legal process. And I'm really shocked. I'm very shocked, really. I did not expect these people to do that. I hope that they are just, they are, they are, they are just politicking. I hope behind the curtains, they actually advise it. I want to call upon the President and the, sorry, the Honorable Minister Chamisa to accept the court ruling and uh, participate in the uh, external election processes. He might actually win. Who knows? He's a popular guy. And uh, why should you be afraid of the uh, elections of, of his own leaders? He should actually participate. He should actually shame the devil. And uh, he will live uh, a long life if he respects the, the, the constitution of people like support him so much really. and your last ways to the Zimbabweans out there who love peace 
we have MTC, we have to see uh, the red, the red, black and white party going forward. Really, I want to call upon uh, the, the, this, this one community at large that uh, I want to discourage uh, people that are planning violence. I know there are some youth that are putting up gangs and groups trying to follow certain leaders like myself to really cause harm or to kill. That is not acceptable. Let us all be democratic, let us respect for life, let us also respect for, for property. And we, I want to urge everyone to desist from violence. And I want to urge, to, every, to, to urge every Zimbabwe to respect the tenets of democracy, constitutionalism, and the rule of law. This is what can, what can make our country become peaceful, make our country develop economically. And let us be united as a family. Let us also encourage some people not to rig elections, some people not to cause violence, some people to agree on political reforms that we've been calling for for the last 20 years, to agree on economic reforms that we've been proposing for the last 20 years. Some people must play the ball. Look at what Zimbabweans are going through economically. Things are so bad. Zimbabweans are suffering economically. There's no employment, there's no cash, the, the, the inflation is so high, the hospitals have no medicine. People are not, they don't have any happiness, people. And we can only, as a, as a family, Zimbabwean family, united together, be able to provide these basic needs so that Zimbabweans are, are going to be happy. One thing that I want to commit myself to the Zimbabweans is that the MDC that I'm going to be part of today, from today onwards, will be part of the solution to the economic challenge in the country, will be part of the solution to the economic challenge, to the, to the political challenge in this country. So really, there will be a new game in town, New politics in town, the people should be embraced for happiness very soon. Thanks a lot, Honorable.